I'm gonna model these salt and pepper shakers. I'm only gonna do one of them, so it's either salt or it's pepper. Probably copy it over so we have two of them in slightly different orientations as we can see here, and it's really simple to do. Uh, this is beginner stuff, all right, for beginners like me, and maybe like you. Uh, before I do that though, I do wanna say that I really do appreciate um, people that have been coming and, and watching my blender videos um, and uh, and leaving me nice comments and and liking the videos. I, I never expected that. I'm doing this just for fun. Uh, I was asked what I'm using uh, these models for, and uh, they are just for fun because my real um, passion, skill, if you call it that, is is for doing the music. But you know, seeing as I have a nine month old daughter, I really uh, I'm not able to do the music. Um, and, and put the energy and the effort into it and the, <laughs> the noise. So uh, 3D is a lot quieter and so uh, I'm doing this just for fun. I really do enjoy it and I hope uh, I hope you do as well. And I'm gonna move slowly, all right, uh, because I was asked to do that. And so uh, I am going to do what you, what you need and what you ask for, all right? So this is what we're going to make, uh, very straightforward and I can't guarantee that they'll be exactly the same, of course. Um, but here I am in Blender 2.76. I haven't updated it for quite a while. Um, and I'm going to do this in front view, front ortho view. You could do it in, in side view, uh, in, in right view, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Note that I've got my screencast keys on here and I've got my 3D cursor right in the center. And if you ever find that it's uh, off somewhere there, you just go uh, Shift S, all right, and come down to cursor to center. All right, so that means that any uh, object that I bring in is gonna come right to the 3D cursor and I want it uh, right in the center. All right, so I am going to go Shift A and that's gonna bring up the Add menu and I'm gonna choose the first selection here, Mesh, and I'm gonna choose a cylinder. But before I click anything, I'm gonna come over here to the vertices and I'm gonna change this to eight and hit Enter. All right, so I'm gonna have eight vertices. So I'm just gonna hold the middle mouse button and move it around. Now, um, I do want to do a couple of manipulations before we get started. I'm going to hit the N key to bring up the side panel, and I'm going to scroll down to Matte Cap. I'm going to click on there. I'm also going to click on Ambient Occlusion, which will give some shadow effects. And I click on the preview here, and I'm going to choose this um, shader. I'm also going to scroll up a little bit to where it says Display, open that arrow, and come down and turn off the grid floor by deselecting that checkbox. Hit N to close that and now we are ready to go and it will look more like the image I just showed you. I want to make this taller in the Z axis so I'm going to go S for scale, Z and I'm just going to pull on my mouse and make it that. Now this, these are going to be very large in the blender world but um, that's fine. Alright so what to do next? Well I'm going to hit the tab key and this brings up this, I can't remember where I got this way to menu, you know, get my menus. I mean, otherwise you'd be going down here and selecting, you know, edit mode, which is essentially what I want to do. All right, and it doesn't matter right now if I'm in vertex or edge selection mode or face mode. All I want to do is I want to add some edge loops. So I'm going to mouse over the object in edit mode and I'm going to hit control R and you can see the pink line in there right in the middle. Now, I don't want just one, I want two. So I scroll my mouse wheel up, and the more times I scroll my mouse wheel up, the more edge loops I will get. So I don't wanna scroll it up, I want two, and I'm gonna press the left mouse button to accept that. And I'm gonna hit the right mouse button to just complete that. I'm deselecting now with A, and I actually do wanna switch over to edge selection mode. It really doesn't matter, I'm just, I don't know why I'm doing it, just, I'm used to it. And what I did to get that was, what did I do? Oh geez, now I'm thinking about it and I can't. Control tab. <laughs> when I think too hard, sometimes I forget what the shortcut keys are. You just do them by reflex. I'm gonna choose edge and I'm going to go um, shift alt and select that edge and shift alt and select that edge. I mean, they were selected before. I could have just done this, but you know, if you ever deselected and you wanna get, if I just click there, I'm just gonna get a piece of the edge. Deselect with A. So if I go shift A, I'll get the whole line. Okay, for both of them. And I wanna move these up and down equally so I select both of them and I can scale in the Z direction. So I'm gonna go S, Z, scale in the Z and pull away. And I'm gonna move these up um, relatively towards the top and the bottom like that. Okay, um, I wanna add one more edge loop and I'm so it's there, right there in the middle. I'm gonna click the left mouse button to accept that and I'm gonna move it up to about there, okay? 
deselect. So we're now we're ready. Now I want to do this in vertex um, view. I want to see my vertices, so I've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select by just clicking on every other vertice along this edge. So that one, and I'm going to turn it and shift select that one, and shift select that one, and shift select that one. So I've got just those. I'm going to pull these down a ways, and I'm also going to scale them outwards, but not in the Z direction, up or down. So I'm going to hit S, and then I'm going to hit Shift Z, which means it won't scale them in the Z direction, every in X and Y, but not Z. So I'm going to go S for scale, Shift Z, and you can see those those lines that just showed up, the, the pinkish red or the red or salmon color, whatever. Red and green, that's the X and the Y axis, but you don't see the blue, the Z. I'm going to pull out just on those selected vertices. All right, hopefully that worked. Okay, just like that. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to create, let's go back to the image. I want to create these sort of edges that come out and, and a bit of this curve. So the vertices that I selected a moment ago are these ones, that one and that one and that one and the one behind it. And so I pulled them out, but to sharpen this edge, I'm gonna put edge, an edge loop there and an edge loop there. So on the left and the right of each of these edges, so on the left and the right of, of let's say I go back to edge selection mode, so I select it. On the left and right of that, if I just, it doesn't matter if I'm in edge select, well, I do wanna be in vertex mode, I think. If I just go Control R in here, all right, I'll, I'll accept that. See the way the edge loop goes all the way up here? I don't want that. I only want the edge loop in this region, all right? And that's gonna enable me to sharpen just this part up and leave this sort of softer here and softer there. So I'll just have a look at it here. Sort of soft down here. And I don't want the edge going all the way up here and, and, and pulling it out. That's not what these bottles or jars look like. And so I'm going to uh, remove that. The way I'm going to do this is I'm gonna to go to face select mode, all right? And this, is, this face is essentially where I want the edge loop and on this side. So I'm going to select all of these faces and all of these and all of these and I'm gonna hide them so they're not affected by the edge loop. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go shift alt and click on that line and that will get the whole row. Otherwise I gotta go like this all the way around, which is totally fine. But I don't want to do that, so I'm Shift Alt. I'm going to do that, and Shift Alt. I'm going to do that, and I'll grab the top one too, and I'm going to continue Shift Alt and get that one, the bottom one. Did I get the bottom one there? I got all those ones. I don't want edge loops there. Ah, interesting. I didn't get it all. Maybe because I was messing around showing you something. Okay, I'm just doing it again. There. I don't want the edge loops to affect those areas, just where I pulled down the vertices. So I'm gonna go H to hide them. All right, so it's looking pretty weird. It looks like a crown, <laughs> an elongated crown. The area where I pulled down the vertices right here, this is where I wanna insert the edge loop. So watch what I'm gonna do. Over this face, I'm gonna go Control R, click to accept, left click to accept, and, and pull down to about there and deselect. I'm going to do the same thing here, and so be careful of the orientation. I want it there. Now, they're not equally spaced. Uh, it's not a big problem, all right? So I'm not doing this mathematically. I'm just going to quickly do this, adding my edge loops on all those areas, the four areas where I pulled those vertices down and out, just like this. And last one. Okay, I'm gonna deselect, and when I come back into object mode, it shows everything, because it was hidden in edit mode, so I can just go Alt H and uh, unhide that, deselect everything, and come back out, so it doesn't look like much, all right? So let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface. Okay, so come over here to the wrench, add my mo modifier, <laughs> subdivision surface right here, and I'm gonna switch the view to two, all right? Still doesn't look like much. now. It's looking kind of faceted here, so I'm gonna hit smoothing, and I get this, so you start to see uh, this, but it still doesn't look very defined. Now, I am not going to hit apply, because as soon as I hit apply, and it applies that subdivision surface, I'm gonna to have tons of polys, and it's gonna make it harder to edit this. So I'm not gonna apply it, but I still will see 
uh, the effects back into edit mode and now I'm going to in this region right here I'm going to go control R and I'm going to add an edge loop now it doesn't look nice and circular because it's adding an edge loop to polys that are you know been pulled out and stretched and stuff so that's fine I'm going to go click to accept and then I'm, I'm going to bring it up and this is a matter of taste and trial and error I'm just going to put it right there let's deselect and come out and have a look at what that's done now you can see it's sharpened this um, maybe too much maybe not I think what I want to do however is I want to pull these out a little bit more so let's go back in here and I see the cluster of uh, vertices where I've done my main edits so I'm going to go B for box select and I'm going to just grab these vertices and then B to box select grab those now it doesn't lose the original uh, selection it keeps it so every time I do B and select I just add to my selection so all those four areas now I want to pull them out but not too much just a little bit again in the X and the Y but not in the Z so I'm going to go scale shift Z pull back just a little bit like that and I'm going to do that so let's have a look at, at how it's it's looking now it's starting to look pretty good it's not stretching too badly when I start to edit this area this stuff will pop out a little bit more but you can see sort of an edge and you can see it rounding there so let's do that let's go back into edit mode and now I'm going to go into face select mode which I like to use uh, for this and I am going to select this top face and I'm going to hit I to inset pull it in a little ways and I'm going to make the hole inside okay I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to start pulling this down now it's going to look all weird because of the subdivision surface let's go back to front view and Z wireframe so we can see and then I'll pull this close to the bottom all right let's go back out of wireframe and I did that you know so I could see how far down to pull it because if I wasn't in wireframe I wouldn't know where exactly it ends so if I look back in here, um, I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to reselect that face, although it doesn't look like anything's happened. And I am going to, I think I will uh, hit E to extrude and right away it, it flattens it out like that. And we're really not going to see on the inside. If I leave it like that, it's going to be just fine. Okay, so let's come back up here. And let's see if we, if I select all these edges, and you'll note that they don't look all flat, like you see the outline of the polys here, it looks like a nice, almost a rectangle, a weirdly shaped rectangle. But the, the lip actually looks rounded. That's because of the subdivision surface. If I turn that off, and you can do that if you prefer to work with it off, but you, you wanna have it, you know, ready to go. I'm just gonna, I'll turn it back on, I don't mind. I want to shift, alt, select that whole area there. And I think I'm going to grab the inside, these ones as well, and I'm going to shrink it in just a small amount. Now, I could just go Shift-Alt and select that. If I don't do that, if I go, let me see if I go plus, now that's going to get the inside as well. So we will do it that way. Shift-Alt, select that. Shift-Alt, select that. Let's scale Shift-Z just a little bit coming in like that. It won't even give an appreciable difference. You won't even really notice what I've done. So, all right. Uh, shift Alt on these guys. Now, that's a little bit too rounded right now. I want to do something else. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. And what should we do? Um, pull them up a little bit. And uh, let's go E to extrude and scale it in a bit. And pull it up. Need extrude and scale it in a bit and pull it up. Let's see if that's looking pleasing or silly. Okay, all right. Let's actually uh, fix that up a little bit. Oh, shift off. Um, let's take these down just a little bit and let's put an edge loop in here and see if that does anything good for us. So it tightens things up. Well, that could be my lip right there. Not looking exactly like the diagram here, but uh, something. Okay, yeah, we'll work with that. Let's come down to the bottom. And in face select mode, I'm gonna select that. I think I'll hit E to extrude and I'll scale in a little bit. Maybe I'll scale 
scale in a bit more. Heat extrude, I'm just gonna put a small bump down there. Let's see what that's looking like. Okay, uh, maybe it's gotta be a bit more, and then we'll mess around with it. Let's come down here like that. And let's um, put an edge loop in here. Pull it down, still adjust the shading a bit and sharpen that up. So we'll get that kind of effect on the bottom. All right, hopefully that's not too sharp of a corner. All right, well, now I could change the shape of this drastically and in interesting ways too. So I'll just put it in sort of that, you know, view. If I come over to Simple Deform and I choose Taper, I can adjust this, you know, like, like this, let's say. And you might like that, you might not. You can shut it off if you want to just go back to normal view. Mm. Just for the sake of the tutorial video, I wonder if I should just leave it on. It's no great uh, effect or anything. Or should I not? Let's leave it on for now. Um, I'm, I am thinking about this area up here. Actually, if I take it off for now, I can see my polys better. I'm thinking that I might want to try an edge loop here, and pull it out. Nah, no, I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll grab this edge here and see how it goes if I bring that up. No, I'm gonna get that weird effect. I don't know. I'm gonna do that, okay? I like that a little bit better. And do I have that on? I have it off, okay. All right, I don't even have to apply these. I can just leave it like that. Let's save. All right, let's work on the lid for this. So um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll just do it from the beginning. I'm gonna go Shift A, add a mesh, circle, and then bring it up near the top. And there's different ways to do this, of course, as always. And I want this to fit inside, so I'll start with it roughly fitting. Go into edit mode, select it, and hit F to make a face. Okay, so now I just have like a plane, but it's in a circle. E to extrude and pull it up a ways, like that. Okay, so it's, I'm building a cylinder essentially. I'm now gonna go Control B to bevel and I'm gonna pull back with my mouse, like that. Down to about there, maybe a bit further. Then I'm gonna roll my mouse up a bunch of times and it starts to round. And the more you roll your mouse, the more it rounds. So you're gonna be adding a lot of polys, but I'm not worried about that, okay? Let's deselect for a moment and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's like, that would be my lid right there. Okay, so we'll do some more work on this and we'll see what we get. So I think I want my lid to have sort of a lip that fits inside there. So you can sort of pop this off, add the salt and pepper, or salt or pepper, or both if you like doing it that way. All right, so I'm gonna come into face select mode. I'm gonna grab that face. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna try Control N to see if any of my polys were flipped the wrong way. Okay, back to there. I'm gonna hit I to inset and push my mouse in and that's gonna create a little indent right there. Okay, a new face that's there. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna pull this Z arrow and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit like that. Okay, it looks like a little plunger that could go in. And I could leave it like that but I'll do, I'll do one other um, effect. Hit it, E to extrude, S to scale, just out like this. Not necessarily out as far as the original. And then E to extrude and pull it down. And I think that's good enough. Very, very simple, basic baby stuff. I shouldn't say that, but control N just to see. Now, these edges are, are too sharp, so the way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to bevel them by hand. So I'm going to, I went to the mesh select mode, I'm choosing edge, and I'm going to go shift, alt, and click that whole edge. That's an, an edge I want to make smoother. And this one, and this one, all three of them at the same time I want to smooth. 
and bevel them. So I'm going to go Control B, pull on my mouse, and you can see we're starting to get a, a, an area there. And I'm going to roll my mouse up twice, maybe three times. Let's do three. And that will, to some extent, round those areas out. Now it still looks very faceted. If I hit smooth, it looks quite a bit better. You could then go in and add edge loops if you wanted to sharpen some of these corners up or these edges up. I really don't want to do that. I just want to see how well that fits. So that could go in there. So let's scale it a bit more. And it could push sort of all the way down to there, or maybe there, or something like that. And that's how the lid would go on. Or maybe it would seal all the way down. You know, but I like to see a little bit of my work, so put it I like to put it something like that. In case you just push the stuff on, you know, and, and that's it. Now by doing it this way, I've created a solid object here. So when I try to poke holes into it, the holes aren't going to go all the way in so that you see the inside of the object. Had I done this, created this um, a different way, um, then you would have seen it empty inside. You don't need to for a simple model like this. All right, save, save, save. So assuming that is okay for the time being, and uh, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the next part. So on it, I'm going to bring in a cylinder to make a round hole. Shift A, cylinder. Now I made a cylinder before and it had eight vertices. I'm switching that back to 32. And I'll pull it up in the Z direction here and I'll scale it in all dimensions. That's fine. It'll be really small. I'll bring it down. Let's scale it in the Z now so it's going to be big enough and it's going to poke in a good depth down into this container. I'm going to hit 7 to go to top view and just have a quick look and then I'm going to zoom around and see do I like the size of those holes. Maybe, maybe I'll make them a little smaller. Okay. I'm also going to go set origin to geometry. I guess it's already in the center of the, of the cylinder. Alright, so let's say that's going to be the, the, the cylinder that's going to be the size of my hole. I'm going to poke into the into the head with that. Um, I'm going back in the top view, and there's not just one hole, right? There's otherwise you'd be there forever trying to dump the pepper or the salt out. So I'm going to use the array modifier. So mo add modifier array, and you can see my second one there. And I'm just going to increase the space here, like that, okay? And I'm going to turn this up to I'm going to try four and I'm going to pull these back and I know my center position is that my 3D cursor right there so I can center these up. You know what? I'm going to go for five and go for broke and that way I'm going to pull this and this middle one's going to go right there. So let's have a look at that. So five can come all out there. So that's, that's great. Now that's all centered up so I'm going to go shift D and I'm going to drag the copy out to here but I'm going to switch this my count down to four and now I'm going to center these as best I can just by eye and uh, maybe we'll come out a little bit shift D and I'm going to bring them over to this side now I'm not doing these I'm not mirroring these it's not going to be the exact exactly you know equidistant kind of thing let's go shift D and do it again and let's bring this down to let's try two and see how odd that looks doesn't look odd at all shift D to copy and bring the two up there and I think that's all of the holes that we need. All right, so I'm going to select that, those ones and hit apply for the array. I'm accepting the array for all of these, accept. And then I think I'm going to grab all of these and go control J to group them or join them all together. So it's all one thing. Now you'll notice that the origin is way over here on the last thing I selected. I can choose set origin to geometry and it pops it right back in the center of this whole mass. So I'm going to push these down nicely. Those will make my holes. I'm going to save before I do this and I'm going to select the head and I'm going to perform a boolean. Add modifier, boolean, change the operation to difference and the object I want to do my cutting with is the cylinder group. Now it's going to look all weird here. That's okay. Hit apply find your cylinders and I know it's worked so I'm just going to delete them otherwise I wouldn't delete them I would just hit H to hide them all right alt H to bring them back I'm going to delete them 
Now this looks really bad, and so what I'm going to do is, and that's because I've got the smoothing on at the same time. If I don't, it doesn't look so bad. I'm going to come over to, can I use edge split just out of curiosity? I could do that. Let me try another way. Let me see if this would work. Auto smooth. Well, you see the problem with that is that changes the smoothing on the whole thing. So I don't know if maybe edge split does uh, as well. So I'll just use uh, edge split. Hopefully all my other edges are okay. I don't need to apply it yet. Let's pull this up and see. Yeah, it's still looking fine. Oh, I'm going to apply it now. And that is that. If I do this, I just found it was a little bit tall. I don't know. I kind of want these stubby, stubby shaker type things. What do you think? Okay, so if I take this one, uh, what can I apply? Oh, I apply the um, the taper. All right, I don't need to apply the smooth the um, subdivision surface at this point. Um, but if I take this Shift D to copy the whole thing over and rotate in the X like like this, I don't know why. And rotate in the Z just so we get uh, something to look at. Then um, we're just basically spending time now. Click on the, the camera because I'm going to render. I'm going to switch this up to 100%, but I'm just going to do a um, an OpenGL render. I'm going to hit the camera down here. See, it says OpenGL render and the active viewport. I'm just going to do that, and that'll render it nice and large. And that's it. Those are uh, the shakers. Now you could uh, get rid of that, and, and maybe on this one, maybe I want the lid up to 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 just show, you know, how it connects. Maybe I don't want it up that much. I don't know. You know, something like this, and then and then I do my render. So it looks a little, you know just a little different. Anyhow, that's my, those are my salt and pepper shakers.